Lesson 1, Simplifying Fractions by Using the Greatest Common Factor. When students hear the term greatest common factor, it sounds so intimidating to them because it sounds so technical. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down for them and make the meaning a lot more obvious to students. Take a look at box A. Here, we start off with the fraction 8 twelfths and we're going to find the greatest common factor. Again, it sounds really technical, so let's break it down in a way that makes sense. Instead of thinking about greatest common factor all at the same time, let's just focus on what factor means, because it's a lot simpler to do that. So we'll find the factors of 8 and the factors of 12. Here are the factors of 8. We have 1 and 8, because 1 times 8 gives me 8. And we have 2 and 4, because 2 times 4 gives me 8. Be sure to leave a gap between 1 and 8 so that you have room to write the factors that come in between. And be sure to list the factors in pairs, just like I did here. Now let's look for the factors of 12. We have 1 and 12. Again, be sure to leave a gap. Next we have 2 and 6, because 2 times 6 gives me 12. And finally we have 3 and 4. Four. So I'll write them down. So these are the factors of 8. Here are the factors of 12. And we understand what factor means. Now that we know what factor means, let's look for the common factors. And I put the emphasis on the word common. So are there any common factors between 8 and 12? And yes, there are. We have 1 and 1 are common factors. Next, 2 and 2 are common factors. And finally, 4 and 4 are common factors. So I'll circle those. And that's what common factors means. Now that we know what common factors means, what is the greatest common factor? And when you present it to students in that way, the meaning becomes a lot more obvious to them where they can take a look at this and say, OK, I see that 4 is the greatest common factor. There are other common factors, but the greatest common factor is 4, and that's why I have a star next to it. So that's how you get students to understand the meaning behind greatest common factors, and you make it a lot more intuitive for them that way. Now let's use fraction circles so that we can see what 8 twelfths actually looks like. Here, I have my twelfths, and when I put them down on paper, students count along with me. But they can't just say one, two, three, and so on. They have to be precise and use the actual units. So they have to say one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths, six twelfths, seven twelfths, and eight twelfths. So this is what 8 twelfths looks like with our fraction circles. Let's go ahead and move on to box B. In box B, we're going to start off with the same fraction. So we'll write 8 twelfths. And we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 1, which was one of the common factors. So I'll write divide by 1, divide by 1. 8 divided by 1 gives me 8. 12 divided by 1 gives me 12. My final answer is 8 twelfths, and I'll draw a box around it. And you'll notice that when we divided the numerator and the denominator by 1, we ended up with the exact same fraction. And here, nothing changed. Let's move on to box C. In box C, we're also going to write 8 twelfths. And this time, instead of dividing by 1, we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by 2. So I'll write divide by 2, divide by 2. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. And my answer is 4 sixths. So I'll draw a box around it. Now this procedure will not stick with students unless you actually show them what it means. So let's use our fraction circles to do that. Taking a look at our fraction, we have 4 sixths. So here are my sixths 
and I need four of them. Now I'm going to overlay these on top of my original fraction. So here we go. Here is one sixth, two sixths, three sixths, and four sixths. And what you want to point out to students is that it's not just a close fit, it's actually a perfect fit. And this is how you introduce students to the concept of equivalent fractions. Let's move on to box D. In box D, I'll start off with 8 twelfths again. And instead of dividing the numerator and denominator by 1 or by 2, we're going to divide by 4. So I'll write divide by 4 in the numerator, divide by 4 in the denominator. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And my answer is 2 thirds. Now let's switch to our fraction circles. Here are the thirds, and I need two of them according to my answer. So I'm going to overlay these on top of my answers. And here is one third and two thirds. And again, it's not just a close fit, it's actually a perfect fit. So here's the big question that students need to understand. Whether you divided the numerator and denominator by 1, by 2, or by 4, you always ended up with the same value. So here we had 8 twelfths, 4 sixths, and 2 thirds, and they were all equivalent fractions. So let me break them apart so that you can see. So the question is, if you end up with the same value every single time, why bother? And here's how I explain it to students so that it makes sense to them. Let's say you had a dollar and you go to the local store and you buy a snack for 25 cents. How much change would you get back? You'd get back 75 cents a change. So what if the cashier reached into the cash register and went, boom, there you go, there's your change, 75 pennies. Would you be happy with that? And invariably, students will say, no, we wouldn't be happy with that. And I'll say, why? because you want 15 nickels instead, right? And they'll say, no, for our 75 cents in change, we want three quarters. And I'll ask them, well, what difference does it make? If you get 75 pennies, that's 75 cents. If you get three quarters, that's 75 cents. Why would you rather have one over the other? And students come to realize that carrying 75 pennies is really hard to do, especially for little kids that have small hands and carrying three quarters is a lot simpler, and that's why they would rather have three quarters instead of 75 pennies, even though they have the exact same value. So taking a look at our fraction circles, this is like carrying around a bunch of pennies, this is like carrying around a bunch of nickels, and this is like carrying around a bunch of quarters. Even though they have the exact same value, which one is simpler to hold in your hands. And you can see here that this fraction, two-thirds, is a lot simpler to hold in your hands, and that's why we call it simplifying. So two-thirds is a lot simpler to hold than eight-twelfths, and that's why we bother, and that's why we go through that process. Once again, here are the steps to find the greatest common factor so that we can simplify fractions. Step one, factor. The factors of eight are one and eight and two and four. The factors of 12 are one and 12, two and six, and three and four. Step two, common factors. What are the common factors between eight and 12? We have one and one, two and two, and four and four. Step three, greatest common factor. And it's pretty obvious, the greatest common factor is four. So we draw a star next to it. And this is how you find the greatest common factor. In the next lesson, we're going to learn the shortcut to finding the greatest common factor and the magic question, which can be even faster than the shortcut. Here's an important note before we move on to the next lesson. 
Why does dividing the numerator and denominator by the same number work, and why do you always end up with the same value? Let's take a look at an example. Here we have the fraction 5 tenths. And if I divided the numerator by 5 and divided the denominator by 5, what do you end up with? 5 divided by 5 gives you 1. 10 divided by 5 gives you 2. And you end up with the fraction 1 half, which is equivalent to 5 tenths. But why does it work? Well, if you think about it, here you have 5 over 5, or 5 divided by 5. And what is 5 divided by 5? Well, that gives you 1. So I'm going to write a number 1 here. And as you know, if you take any number and you divide it by 1, you end up with the same value. That's why 1 half and 5 tenths are equivalent fractions.